to death. 24 counts of murder in the first degree, 116 counts of criminal attempt to commit murder in the first degree, one count is a sentence enhancer, and one count of class four felony possession of an explosive device. James Holmes looks the same as he did last week in, in court here, dazed, confused, and of course with that bright orange hair. Only this time cameras not allowed inside as prosecution laid out 142 charges against him, including two murder counts for each death. Now when the judge mentioned the death penalty, Holmes looked directly at him. The judge also ordered the prosecutors return the, jour the journal Holmes had sent to a psychiatrist prior to the shootings, and that journal had been intercepted by the police. Now, the movie theater massacre, it has raised a whole host of questions, including about the issue of gun control in this country. Now, today, two lawmakers, both from our region, announced they're introducing new legislation that will limit the ability to purchase the unlimited quantities of ammo online, no questions asked. Now, the bill called the Stop Online Ammunition Sales Act would also require that ammo dealers report bulk sales of ammunition directly to law enforcement. So it's time to close the loophole, loophole that's allowing killers, deranged, insane, and even terrorists to buy ammunition online. The pain does not go away. I can tell you from speaking as a victim. And that Carolyn McCarthy and before her, Senator Lautenberg. Um, and Carolyn McCarthy, as everybody knows, has a direct connection to this. She lost her husband when he was gunned down on the Long Island Railroad and her son shot and literally had to learn how to walk all over again. And after that, she uh, ran and has been a member of Congress since. And the issue for her of assault weapons and unlimited ammo, a major issue. But it's not just lawmakers that are speaking out on this issue. Victims of gun violence also say they have had enough. And to help put a face on this, Cheyenne Norman, whose four-year-old son was shot in the head and killed by a stray bullet in the Bronx just a week and change ago. She joined with Reverend Al Sharpton this past weekend as they announced a new effort to stop gun violence, an effort he calls Occupy Corners. I'm glad to know that the people responsible for this is in custody at this point in time. But that can never, ever bring my baby back. This cannot keep happening. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. And you know, we talk about mass shootings, and we'll do it a lot this program, but it's the everyday violence and the uptick in violence around this country, especially in inner cities like New York City that we've seen here. And again, the commonality for far too often is guns. Uh, we'll get into that as well. But if you want a reminder that it wasn't some anomaly what happened in Aurora, Colorado, well, you got one this past Friday of what could have been. Maryland police were able to stop a potentially violent episode before it began, thankfully, by a guy who called himself the Joker. This guy, Neil Edwin Prescott. He threatened to use an arsenal of firearms, including semi-automatic weapons, against his former co-workers. Take a look at what they found. He was taken into custody Friday morning after a search of his home found what you see in front of you, a cache of more than 16 guns and thousands and thousands of rounds of ammo. Now I want to bring our panel in on this. Jeannie Zeno, Dean and Professor of Political Science from Iona College, our good friend. Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, and our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. All right, guys. Listen, uh, as you know, Jeannie, um, we've covered shootings at colleges, at schools, at workplaces, at places where people learn English language in cities and in, in suburban areas and urban areas. And Unfortunately, for a week we'll talk about it, then the next week we'll change the subject. Maybe I'm wrong, but I get the sense there's a fatigue from the American public about this. And while they don't want to talk about a right to bear arms, a right to bear an AR-15, the assault weapon that we saw used in Colorado, I get the sense that the American public's ready to discuss this and say there needs to be some limits. 
Uh, do you get that idea? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you're talking about sensible gun control. And I think if you look at the polls, most Americans say they're in favor of it, not taking away the rights of hunters to, you know, to participate in their sport, and yet not opening the American public up to what we've seen in Colorado. That said, when you're talking about an issue like Colorado, you know, gun control, yes, but what about mental health services? What about trying to identify these people on a basis that makes some kind of sense? Yes, he may have been purchasing guns, but by all accounts, he was purchasing those guns legally. Yes, we can tighten up those gun control laws a bit, but what about trying to have some sensible mental health interventions in this country? People have talked. I'm from a college. Many of these shooters you see are of this age. This is a time when mental health begins to become an issue, yep. particularly for young men. Maybe there are ways in which we could invest in that kind of assistance as well, which would go a long way to helping in this kind of situation where gun control, quite frankly, may not because these <coughs> guns can be purchased illegally very, very easily. Yep. And it's that that tight and difficult gap, I think, that you can find there. Because you have the two polls that says no guns, and then some people say unlimited guns. In fact, after this tragedy, even members of Congress, some said, well, we would have been better off if there was more guns and more people are packing heat in the theater and that kind of craziness. But, Dom, to me, if all that we're fighting about is one kind of a gun, we miss the issue. That mother who lost her child, a senseless act of shooting, and the amount of violent deaths that are happening by gun in cities all across this country that don't get the headlines right now, if there's more of those kind of voices, I think there's a chance, and maybe I'm a little naive here. You're naive. But I think there's a chance that we can find a little bit of common ground where it becomes, I instead of a political liability, a political asset for somebody to say, unlike McCarthy who's in a safe seat, to say, you know what? We don't need to have AR-15s in people's hands. We don't need for a guy to be able to around 6,000 <clears> rounds of ammo I, here legal. I, I wish that the argument you just made wasn't naive, but I know when I started in journalism mm. almost 30 years ago, and I guess we're all getting old except for Dr. Zeno here, but um, <laughs> when, I started, <laughs> when I started years ago, uh, I remember the first thing I, I would cover was the senseless, endless, daily violence in, in urban areas, translation, communities of color. And so what happened to this mother, in which she was with Reverend Sharpton recently, this, this has been going on for decades. And Dr. Zeno made a very good point. There are many issues at play. And I don't think the NRA is ever going to give in, Richard. They're not going to cave one one iota. What's going to happen is they, they're very smart public relations wise. They go underground when there are shootings like this and then they pop right back up. And so when she brings up the mental health aspect, yeah. that's something but, that we don't talk about. But see, I, I just want this one yeah, second yeah. because it's important to say that mental health services have been cut and cut and cut to the bone in cities and states across the country. Well, I don't know in this case um, if the cuts played in. I think that there is... No, we'll get into this, but at least give me just a couple more minutes on this. And, and again, if we could show what we're talking about with this AR-15 and, and the ammo uh, that uh, this guy got his hands on before that fateful shooting, nobody, I think, in their right mind is going to argue with me that that AR-15 is what ought to be in the regular general population's uh, hands here, especially without the background checks and the idea that somebody on the terror watch list could buy this stuff. And to go through some of the numbers, because this is where I think that I don't agree 100% that there's no way to do this because there is some, if not unanimity, there is a strong public consensus that there are certain things that we ought to roll back, even from gun owners, right? It, it tends to peak usually after the latest incident, like the one in Colorado. But as as Dominic mentioned, I there's really numbers, there's yeah. really not a lot of political will because in, I think in a large part because of the NRA, but there is will among the American people. If we can go through A30. Uh, and go through. You can see that there are some people who want to see, if we go through uh, A30 through, uh, through 33, please, uh, and there you see, there is some support on high capacity gun magazines like the type that uh, was used in Colorado. As we keep going, assault weapons, 62% support a renewal of the assault weapons ban. And, and there's even support among gun owners and, and other people, 86%, including a majority of, of NRA members, say they support gun background checks. Which So you see, there is an area of common ground, though the political will, I don't think, is there in large part because of the NRA. And I just wanted to follow up on the mental health issue uh, quickly, which is to say it hasn't escaped my attention that the, the crossover of the people who oppose gun control and oppose 
healthcare and, and healthcare reform and universal healthcare is almost the same group in its entirety. Well, I just tell you one thing, and we'll leave it at this. If I can, Justice Scalia, who has been, I'd say, one of the biggest defender of gun rights that we're going to find here in, in, uh, in an open-ended uh, Second Amendment, listen to what Justice Scalia had to say, and this is after the Aurora shooting. He said, obviously, the amendment, Second Amendment, doesn't apply to arms that cannot be hand-carried. Now, I've had debates on this show uh, with a former congressman, in fact, last week, who said, well, maybe we should allow uh, something like a bazooka. Um, so uh, the chief, ju the justice disagrees. He said, it is to keep and bear, talking about arms, so it doesn't apply to cannons. I suppose there are handheld rocket launchers that can bring down airplanes that will have to be looked at. It will have to be decided. And I read that in, that if this goes before the high court and somebody can craft this in a tight enough way that you can still have a right to bear arms, but there are limits, I think the high court just maybe will be able to reassess what those limits are. And again, maybe I'm being overly hopeful, but I just... I don't, I don't speak for myself here, I don't speak for this table, but I think I speak for most Americans. I'm getting tired of talking about these stories where everybody says after the fact, like Virginia Tech, come on, we could have done better than this. This person shouldn't have been walking around with an assault weapon. This doesn't make sense.